welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, really appreciate you stopping by on today's video. We're discussing defense of warships, as a few times in the past I have discussed these kind of weapon systems, I find them rather fascinating because I don't know enough about them and I'd love to discuss a little bit about them today with a new system that's, I guess not really new, but has been consistently upgraded and changed to be one of the more prominent defense systems of naval warships of today. Raytheon's Rolling Airframe Missile, or RAM, is a lightweight supersonic weapon designed to destroy anti-ship missiles. Also, of course, airborne threats to ships at close range, typically less than 10 miles. Much like a bullet fired from a rifled barrel, RAM Block 2 missiles rolls around its longitudinal axis as it flies. The missile uses the rolling motion generated by its tail fins to change direction on a dime. It's guided by a radio frequency infrared seeker to intercept the threats. The weapon system allows naval vessels to effectively engage high-performance supersonic and subsonic threats including sea-skimming, anti-ship missiles, high-speed incoming vessels, rotary and fixed-wing aircraft including helicopters and other surface targets. Now, CRAM is an evolution of the Mark 15 Phalanx Close-In Weapon System, or CIWS, commonly known as SeaWiz, which entered service in 1980. Raytheon received a $136.2 million contract from the US Navy in September 2013 for the production of four C-RAM missile systems, which are different to the standard RAM missile systems, to upgrade the 19 Phalanx CIWS currently in service. The contract included a 94.8 million optional additional 4 CRAMs and 12 Phalanx systems to be delivered to 2014. Now the CRAM uses a RIM or RIM 116 rolling airframe missile, hence the name RAM, which provides the enhanced counter-attack capability and able to guard nearly all modern threats in place of the equipped Phalanx systems. The RIM-116 is a 5-inch missile that utilizes the Sidewinder technology for the warhead and rocket motor, and the Stinger's Missile Seeker. The launcher system is a 21-round or 11-round launcher, and the missile comprises of the main weapon system, the rotary base, and the technology that goes into the actual superstructure and infrastructure of the ship itself to allow it to aim. Its autonomous dual-mode passive radio frequency and infrared guidance provides the capability for engaging multiple threats simultaneously. It can engage threats at over 5 miles and double the range of the current phalanx system. RAM is continually improved to stay ahead of the ever-evolving threat of anti-ship missiles, helicopters, aircraft and surface craft. As amazing as the CIWS phalanx is, it really is a successful integration to take some of its key attributes and pass it on to the missile age with its 11 missile launcher assembly. It combines the RAM's superior accuracy, extended range and high maneuverability with the Phalanx's Block 1B high resolution search and track radar sensor systems and quick response capability against close in threats. The low risk CRAM anti-ship weapon can pretty much be fitted to any class of ship, that includes the Coast Guard and they're actually trying to place these on many ships around the world today. It's designed to offer superior protection to all kinds of marine application. The system is fitted with the same deck system and mechanical hardware of that of the Phalanx and requires minimal shipboard changes. The actual above deck system weighs around 16,901 pounds. Now the CRAM is self-contained and is a system that employs the 1B CIWS high resolution search and track radar which provides the RAM with a very reliable radio frequency, infrared IR detection and tracking capabilities to defeat air and surface threats. The Fire and Forget missile is designed to provide quick response and superior protection for naval vessels. It's equipped with the infrared guidance and autonomous dual mode which gives a passive radio frequency system and requires no shipboard support after launch. It is capable of destroying anti-ship missiles and can be launched from the Mark 44 Guided Missile Round Pack or GMRP coupled to the Mark 49 Guided Missile Launching System housing up to 21 missiles. It also offers high firepower and multiple simultaneous engagement capabilities which is crucial in comparison to the Phalanx system which of course with its projectiles to a standard configuration cannot multiply engage at the same time. The variants of the RAM missile include the RAM Block 1, Block 1A and Block 2. The Block 1 platform is equipped with a new image seeking scanner and an autonomous IR all the way guidance system while the Block 1A is fitted with additional signal processing features. The RAM Block 2 configuration incorporates a larger rocket motor and an advanced control section with an improved RF receiver. The missiles are pretty much effective against a very wide spectrum of existing threats. 
The RAM Block 1 IR upgrade incorporates a new IR all the way homing guidance mode to improve AW performance against evolving passive and active ASCMs. The Block 1 missile retains all the capabilities of the Block 0 missile while adding two guidance modes, IR only and IR dual mode enable, which is IRDM. The IR only mode guides on the IR signature of the ASCM incoming missile. The IRDM will guide on the IR signature of the missile while retaining the capability of utilizing RF guidance if the incoming missile signature becomes adequate to guide onto. The RAM Block 1 can be launched in IR all the way mode as well as the dual mode or passive RF followed by passive IR used by Block 0. The Block 1 upgrade program was successfully completed in August 1999 and as you can see this system has been around for some time but with major upgrades. With a series of operational tests, the demonstration of this system did very well in its initial stages and the introduction to maturity to place on the ships was very quick. In 10 scenarios, real anti-ship missiles and subsonic vandal target missiles at Mach 2.5 were intercepted and destroyed under realistic conditions. Ram Block 1 achieves its first shot kills on every target in its presented scenarios, including sea skimming, diving and highly maneuverable profiles in both single and stream attacks. However, the supersonic anti-ship missiles that CRAM targets are engaging are evolving very rapidly and even to this day, the CRAM is slowly becoming obsolete to some of the modified technology that anti-ship missiles are capable of doing. The jointly developed indian russia Brahmos ramjet cruise missile is said to be capable of Mach 2.8 or more, and a new hypersonic version under development, the Brahmos 2, aims to achieve Mach 7. A Mach 3 miniaturized version with a smaller radar cross section is also planned as well. As you can see, this missile is really being put up to its paces against the missiles it's trying to engage. No ship is invincible to anti-ship missiles of today. You put enough of them against a ship and I can guarantee you it doesn't matter how many of these things you put on board, eventually one will get through. There's a lot of technology at stake, a lot of different variables at stake, and when you're relying upon such a close-in weapon system, you better hope that they're going to work 100% every time. Of course, with ships of today, most of the counter efforts of engaging ships from long distance is really the main key. But if it comes down to it, CIWS is the last resort, and it's a last resort you're going to want to rely upon. However, CRAM has had some really good data and reports brought back from its testing and evaluation stages. Now, compared to the Phalanx system, with CRAM you do have a little bit more time for that close-in engagement and can knock down further incoming missiles farther from the ship. This is of course very, very important because it was feared that a large, very fast anti-ship missile, even when shot up by Phalanx, might still end up having parts of it slam into the target ship at such close range. CRAM, however, has 11 missiles ready to fire and can also engage several targets at once, something that the Phalanx just could not do with its traditional projectiles. The main advantage of CRAM over guns like the Phalanx is the range and the computing to put the weapon on target. Depending on the incoming missile speed, CRAM can be launched at over 20 miles away and intercepted with very high probability of kill at around 6 miles. Whatever the math is, the CRAM system will launch so that it is killing a target around the 6 mile mark. Phalanx has an effective range of around a mile, its kill zone within about close to 500 to 800 meters. The problem with the ladder engagement is that one mile is very very close to the ship and the minimum engagement range of 600 to 500 meters is even closer. Even a successful engagement with 20mm rounds, a cruise missile travelling at 600 knots could continue on kinetically and be very dangerous to the crew or to the ship. The best practice is to use the combination of both in a layered defence system where applicable. The Nimitz class CVN will use the Enhanced Sea Sparrow Missile or ESSM out to 30 miles. If the SSM doesn't do the job, immediately RAM will have the time to engage after the miss, launching at about 20 to 30 miles before killing it at hopefully 6 miles. Phalanx is the final straw, which will engage targets of the ESSM missile shooting at 3 to 4 miles and hopefully killing at 1 mile or closer. All three are integrated automatically into the Nimitz class self-defense system or SSDS. So how does CRAM compare to Goalkeeper? Does it have the same range and engagement benefits of Goalkeeper over Phalanx? Well, Goalkeeper uses a bigger gun than Phalanx, 30mm versus 20mm. That has its benefits and disadvantages, but the disadvantages really do win out, which is why most navies are replacing Goalkeeper. Goalkeeper is big, bulky, and requires a lot more maintenance as well than the cumbersome systems that it needs to reload. 
All that with the negligible benefits in range, 20mm can put just as many rounds up into the sky and do so actually with better accuracy. What about drones? What about swarms of drones against ships? That's the modern future of today. There is also an already effective defensive system against drones in general. If you cut the link between the drone that's controlling it, you've killed the drone and it will fly itself into the ground or the sea. Of course, CRAM really isn't exactly the most capable system to knock out this kind of platform. It's effective against 1 or 50 drones in some capabilities, but drone engagement will fall into the same rings of multi-layered defense as any other target. The difference will be the added ability to engage them electronically and simultaneously. It's safe to say CRAM is an extremely accurate weapon. RAM is very effective against stealthy, non-emitting anti-ship missiles due to the performance of those IR seekers. If the incoming missile is emitting an active radar, which is the vast majority of them do, RAM will use both its IR seeker and RF seeker to home in on the missile both visually and by emissions. Conversely, the RAM can guide onto the incoming missile very, very accurately with just its RF seeker in an active jamming environment. The CRAM and its own launcher sensors make these advantages twofold. It's safe to say this weapon system is here to stay and will continually be upgraded for the navies of the future. Multiple different orders are being made around the world and it seems as though this way be a complete contender for the Phalanx and Goalkeeper system. A very interesting weapon nonetheless, but of course if you are having to use this, it's not a good day for you. Guys, I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. I really do appreciate you stopping by, and if you have any questions or comments about this weapon system, please put them in the comment section below. I would encourage you to hit that like button, it really does help me out. Also, if you want to be notified of any upcoming videos in the future, please click on the little bell button by the subscribe button so you can be notified of any upcoming videos. I'd also like to thank everyone who has been supporting me on my channel recently in terms of donations and just stopping by in the videos. If you do want to support my channel, feel free to go check out my Patreon page or my PayPal link in the description box below. I hope you have a wonderful day. All the best. Bye-bye.